Hey, it's Steve again, and I'm um, continuing my series of digging into different companies' patents to look at what's potentially coming down the pipe. Um, one of the big requests that I've had from several people is they're seeing that companies like Moon Surgical or Distal Motion are pushing heavily into the ASC. And people ask me often about, um, you know, how are Intuitive placed for the ASC? And generally, they don't have a lot of, you know, don't have a massive amount of systems in there, but they do have some systems uh, in the ASC. And I firmly believe that the DaVinci 5, because it removes the need for one of the towers and also creates a laparoscopic tower, is a way to get into some of the ASCs. But as I, as I talk to a lot of the people that run ASCs, that, that work in the ASCs, that are thinking of the future of the ASCs, the size of the systems and the level of acuity of the procedures is often a mismatch between something like a DaVinci 5 and um, what is probably required within an ASC. So today I'm going to speculate deeply, but I'm, I've, again, I've been digging a lot into different patents uh, that are out there, uh, especially by Intuitive, that could indicate that they're looking at an ASC system. Now, what you've got to remember is the history of Intuitive is that they have obviously what is the, um, the, uh, the, the system that you see today is what they originally had. But they also bought, remember back in the day, they, they mixed with um, Computer Motion, who had a table mounted system. So they do know how to do table mounted or bed rail mounted systems uh, in the ASC. And I noticed they've updated some patterns lately that could indicate something Again, total speculation, but people ask me, how could they go into the ASC? Well, if they were cooking up an ASC robot, then uh, I think I might have found a couple of the patents and a couple of the ways that they might look at this. And I'll give you some of the thinking behind it. Please don't take this as I know something about their, they have an ASC robot. I don't. This is just looking at their patents and speculating heavily of how you could take those patents and convert them into a real world product and what it might look like. Let's uh, again dive into my document view um, and I run this off uh, my keynote. This is a speculation, this is not a real product, it's, it, it's a speculation, it's a mishmash of all kinds of things. But what I'm trying to show in this is that if you end up with an ASC product it's going to probably look very different than the bedside unit that you get from most of the current systems that are used in major hospitals today. And let me explain a little bit of my thinking and why. This is Steve Bell's thinking on what an ASC robot needs to be. Well, number one, I think it needs to be small footprints. It needs to be as minimal size as possible. And that's for having it in the rooms, which are smaller rooms. But it's also for storage. ASCs uh, quite often have maybe four operating rooms, and one of them is quite often used as a storage room. They have very limited storage, and there are fire regulations, there are problems for corridors, and even if the OR is smaller, you can't be storing a large system with a console and a tower and a massive bedside unit in a lot of the ASCs. You'd end up having to knock walls out, knock ceilings out. So whatever happens, it's got to be a small footprint and it's probably got to come from either the floor or the bed upwards because you probably might not have all the height that you have in a, um, in a major operating room uh, over a main block. So you have to think about that. And ideally, you'd like to eliminate the console. The console is a big piece of kit to have in an operating room. Um, no bedside unit. What do I mean by that? Uh, J&J has gone down that route with Otava, as I've said, which is where they've, they've eliminated the bedside unit by putting the arms integrated into the table. If you look at what um, a couple of the other systems are doing out there, they are trying to reduce the size of the bedside unit. So Moon Surgical, which is definitely uh, aimed at the ASC, has one single bedside unit and it's fairly compact, but it, it doesn't exist and it's not a no bedside unit. So ideally, I think you'd want no bedside unit. And, and the way you do that is to have the arms either integrated into the table or hang onto the table. Think DLR from the old days of uh, what Medtronic bought. For many of the procedures, you're going to need a scope arm, 
but you're only going to need two instrument arms. You're probably not going to have a lot of complex retraction. Now, you might end up with three, but it's going to be two very active instrument arms. And think about in a hernia or in some of the other procedures, lower acuity procedures, a gallbladder, maybe you'll need a third arm for retraction. Um, you're going to want to have two very active arms. It's, it's not like a big colorectal case that you're going to do. The other thing is that you'll probably want to be working single quadrant at a time. So do I need my arms to be able to move quadrant to quadrant all the time? Or could I reposition them on the patient? So I'm working on a left side inguinal hernia and then I work on a right side. Can I manually move the arms to that position? Think a little bit like um, virtual incision, the way that they have the system and you can move it around the quadrants, but if you want to move it from quadrant to quadrant, you can literally reposition the system. So I think that it'll be single quadrant at a time. You'll be looking at those kind of procedures, either down in the pelvis or left side or right side or up for the GI or for a bariatric. But you're not going to need a big complex boom structure to move these arms around and you're not going to want to have big arms. The whole system needs to be cost effective. ASCs are driven on profits, they are profit driven, the reimbursement is less, so you need a cost effective way of dealing with that. And one of the interesting things is as well is sterilization of instruments. I'm not going to go into it today, but there is a sneaky little pattern out there that I've seen, um, which is having sheathed instruments so that you can potentially have no need to sterilize instruments, but I'll leave that for another day. Um, and then allow hybrid procedures. I think the pioneers of this uh, have really been um, distal motion with Dexter, where you can have robotic control, but also be scrubbed in at the bedside. Rob Surgical as well, they, they, they do that as well and allow that. And Moon Surgical is, is really designed to be that way. But I think this, I don't know people don't like the word hybrid procedures, but a mixed way you're doing robotic combined in with actually bedside. And the reason for that is that in the ASC often as well, you're dealing with a, a scrub tech, you don't have an assistant that's the same, and being able to be at the patient's side, put the ports in, get into the robotic phase of it, use some manual. Oh, and there are some other patterns out there that I'm going to show in a couple of weeks um, about how you take an intuitive instrument and put it onto a manual adapter and turn it into something that looks like an art essential. Very interesting that they'll have those. All tells me that Intuitive is pointing at, maybe they're not going to do it now, maybe it's not for some time, but how do they get to the ASC? And, and these are the kind of things that you need to have in a system. Now, why would you go to the ASC? And, and part of the reason for the ASC is that a lot of the lower acuity procedures are being pushed heavily into the ASC. And that is where the puck is going. That is where a lot of the procedures are going. And that is where a lot of the volume of procedures are that are untapped today for intuitive. So I think they need to think of a way to get to the ASC. And the Da Vinci 5 is definitely helping them to get there. But if they want to go and take that large slice of the pie in the ASC, I think they need a different robot. So are they cooking one up? Well, um, let's look at it like this. So, so if you didn't have a bedside unit, uh, you would basically have, and I'll try and draw on here, you would have these four arms that are um, basically connected to the bed. Go and look at some of the old DLR patents um, and images of the way that they had it. Um, and I can maybe even find that for you. But but basically, um, I'll, I'll try and put a DLR image in here as we go. If you If you have these mounted to the bed, you have no bedside unit. But you'd still have a fairly large console, even though that looks a bit smaller on this pattern. This is an intuitive pattern and basically shows four arms connected to the bed um, and a console. But I think that's not quite where you would go with this. So instead, if you look at some of their patterns, this is the way that their controller works today. And this is what they envisage as a light controller. So imagine that you've got two handheld free floating controller so no haptic arms you stand in front of the controller and you have a screen and you can look at what's happening on the laparoscopic image and these are free floating non-tethered that would be like the Simani from MMI it would be like the Mantra 3 from SSI 
or it would be um, like the Ascensus Lunar controllers that we've seen. So go and look at any of those things. And again, if I, if I get a chance to put some images in, I will. But these are free floating controllers that are not tethered. And that allows you to, to stand here with no big, big console. So there is number one, reducing the size of the footprint. And what you'll notice here is that this in this image on their pattern, the surgeon is standing and it looks like they're gowned up. So I think this is indicating that you would look for a sterile user. So you're not going to be touching, touching a non-sterile controller. You're going to have a sterile user in this space. And here's what it could look like, and it's from their patents. It's, this is not my invention. This is from their patents, where you'd have this very small footprint controller. You might have a tower that they're looking at or the screen, but this might just be just to take these commands from these hand controllers and translate that to the arms on the bed. Here they have up to four, but I think you would need much less than this. And you'll notice that they, they have a lot less travel. They have a lot less movement. Um, because you're not going to need that for these lower acuity single quadrant procedures or um, down in the pelvis procedures or up to the hiatus procedures. So technically you could have your tower sitting here for with all your insufflation and everything, this small mini controller standing and you're sterile so you can work bedside, put the ports in, add ancillary products, do some parts of it manually, this is now starting to me to look like an ASC device. Let's dig a little bit deeper into the controllers. Now, that doesn't mean that you lose wristed control. So even with the SSI or, or um, the Lunar, you still have wristed control. So as you move these wrist controllers in space, you would translate that to wristed movement on their instruments. So these instruments could be a little bit uh, simpler. Uh, they don't have to be quite the same maybe as they are today with the da Vinci XI, but you would still want a wrist, a fully wristed system, but you might want to have economically different instruments that are in there. But you, what you would do is you have the, you would have the surgeon next to the bed. This is all in a very compact, small space, which is ideal and perfect for um, the ASC. And you might just have a scope arm and two instrument arms. And let's have another deeper look into this. Um, so that's just showing the wristed instruments again and how you would have a control mechanism. So I think they would have wristed. So this is a rather crude uh, image and don't imagine that if ever they brought this out, it would look like this. But it looks like you have a Z rail here and then you have some kind of computer control here or some kind of robotic arm here. But a lot of the um, mounting would be straight onto the bed the, the the rail at the side of the bed and that would allow you to position these how you want and your sterile bedside so you can position these how you want you would be sterile and bedside so therefore you could easily move these they could be mechanical or they could be um, robotically driven um, it would make sense to just have them as mechanical arms because you probably don't need all of those degrees of freedom if you're just working in one quadrant and then you'd have these instrument packs which could be the sort of the size of a standard xi instrument and they move up and down the rail in the z axis uh, axis and you would have less movement more limited movement more manual movement but what that would allow is a lower cost of the device a lower cost of the procedure and you might be able to actually have um, either disposable single use or sheathed instruments on this that would make sense but this would be a setup, and here it's clear there's no big bedside unit. There's nothing to store there. These things can be taken off and put into almost like a box on the shelf. They would be very small and compact. And that does go back to the original computer motion um, images that you, know, you see from the early days, but this would be a much smaller, more compact version of what the computer motion was. And I think that's all you really need for an ASC. You don't need the big complexity of the mainframes. And I think that Intuitive, not sure if they're ever going to bring this out, but if they did, it would be radically different to the XI or to the DaVinci 5. We would really be talking here about a focused in ASC system. And the way that they, they have this very clever way that they would um, assign the controllers to the arms, you would literally just 
be stood bedside and you would click the controller next to the arm that you want to assign the control to. So I want my right arm controller assigned to that instrument. I would just pair the two very closely together. And that would take a lot of the complexity out of the control unit as well. The control unit is really just then about, you know, taking the inputs and turning them to outputs. And I think that these could be very simplified robotic arms. And basically what you end up with is a bed mounted system, much like the DLR or much like the old computer motion system, but probably having some of the, um, some of the movement that you still have on the Z rail with the uh, XI. So I think it's like a blend of all worlds here. Uh, yeah, forget my weird image, but I think it would be lighter. I think it'd be connected to the bed. And I think that you, you would, you know, this would really be um, a way that they could get into the ASC, have all of, all of, the wristed movement of a robot, but in a much lower acuity system. So again, would it have a small footprint if it was like this? Yes. Would it have no console? Not no console, but it would have a much smaller console and you would use the screen of the, of the, um, of the laparoscopic tower. So you don't end up with two. So you end up maybe having in there something like a Da Vinci, a Da Vinci five tower, but then you have this smaller control unit and the no bedside unit by having the arms that mount directly onto the bed rails. I think you only need two instrument arms and a scope arm, and the scope probably doesn't need to move around that much because you're gonna be looking in one quadrant and you're gonna be stood next to it bedside and you'll be able to move the scope manually, much like you do with a moon surgical today. So those, those arms, in my opinion, would be something like a moon surgical in terms of they're back drivable and they're cobotic. So you can move them around easily, get them in the position you want, and then go into the control of the instruments. <clears throat> I think this would be ideal for a single quadrant at a time. So a hernia or a sacropexy or some kind of lower acuity procedures that are high volume for the ASC. It would definitely be more cost effective you know, you'd have your, your lap tower in there, um, lap manual instruments, look at the Hologic for the, uh, for the uh, advanced energy. Think about potentially taking some of your robotic things like a stapler and putting it onto a manual firing mechanism or, 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 or making it some kind of manual firing stapler if you needed a stapler for something like bariatrics. I think it, this absolutely would allow hybrid procedures. So for me, I, I find it, um, yeah, I think that I think that this is one way, just looking at one of the patents, there are several others out there, of how you could take the heritage of the computer motion, the th sort of the way that DLR was originally done, you could blend the two, add in there the know-how of what they have from the current intuitive da Vinci systems, make it a lightweight um controller system, hybrid, using the Da Vinci 5 tower as the main brains. And so you get all of that, the scope, the ICG, everything, and they've got a handheld. Remember, they've got a very manual laparoscopic scope in there. Could do 2D, could do 3D. I think that this is one, in, one way that Intuitive could bring a robot to the ASC. Will they do it? I don't know, you know, let's see how they get on with the Da Vinci 5. Maybe if they start seeing Moon Surgical or Dexter or maybe even J&J's Otavo when it comes, start to um, take the procedures or the positioning in the ASCs, that is an area where Intuitive needs to be very defensive. So potentially uh, Intuitive could go there. That's my thought for today. Uh, I'd love to know in the comments. Uh, give, give this video a like, please. Uh, it really helps the algorithm for, for me to get more content out there. Um, I'd love to know what you think. Is this, am I just fantasizing here? Is this uh, just more of Steve Bell's madness? Or do you think that that could be some kind of plausible way that they may implement an ASC strategy of a robot? I think they've got one sitting somewhere. Will they pull it out? Who knows? When will they pull it out? Maybe never. Uh, but yeah, I'd love to get your comments and your thoughts on it. So thank you very much.